Hi, good. Yes. Um, how's uh, how's how's voice by the way? Is he, is he okay? Uh, it's is good. Yeah, good? yeah. We uh, we sacrificed the Welsh um, in order to keep going. Yeah. So sorry, people from Wales. We have, we have so many good friends in Cardiff, uh, the Newport area, like uh, um, Future to the Left and Solutions and No Choice, like bands we've toured with, you know, in America as well. And it was bad having to cancel. It was super bad. I mean. I believe on record it's the third or fourth show we've ever canceled. Well, minus the whole tour last year. <laughs> that doesn't count because we never got on the plane. So <laughs> France swooping in the last yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. I mean, maybe it could be France Nicolas as an angel. Yeah. Comes out <laughs> I'd, I'd like to think so. Oh yeah. Uh, over the past few weeks, you've toured across Europe and the UK with Crazy Arm. Yes. Who you were supposed to tour in the last tour. Yes. So it was good to finally get. Oh yeah, on board with those guys. Absolutely, and they were they were nice enough to take another gamble on us uh, actually getting on the plane and coming over. So no, no, they're they're great guys. Plymouth, Plymouth's finest. Oh yes. Um, but you know we had already have like so many good stories of uh, like starting bonfires in the back of the venue in uh, Southampton. Yeah. Notice I didn't say Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. Southampton. Southampton. You're welcome, England. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, Stuff like that, like, uh, you know, we started this huge bonfire because they kicked us out of the club at 11 o'clock, and we didn't, our driver lives there. He's a crazy Scottish guy, but he lives there. Yeah. So he's like, we're not leaving till 8 in the morning. I'm like, shit, man. And the, all the bars were closed, too, because it was a Sunday or Monday night, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we started a bonfire, and Darren was the only one who came back. Darren from Crazy Night was the only one who came back. And, uh, just crazy night, like people jumping over the fire, our guitar player James, hey, don't try any of this shit, it's fucking <laughs> stupid, but like we were burning, it was complete like uh, trash everywhere, we started a trash fire, in the back. so we, there was this broken chair that he put on the fire, I'm talking like full blazing, on fire, and James is like, I'm gonna go sit on it, and, like, oh, everybody's like, oh, yeah, cool dude, go for it, <laughs> he goes to sit, I was like, ha ha, and then just the chair gave, and he fell on the fire, and, like everyone, like Tom and Jay were just like, <laughs> <laughs> no I, one tried to help, no, no, I rush in, and I like, grab him, uh, good thing I was wearing my leather jacket, my uh, fireproof <laughs> Nikki Six jacket, and uh, I ran in and pulled him out, and now he has like, this insane, like, tail on the eye, he has this like, uh, burn tail on his butt, so it's, it's pretty intense. Maybe he'll get it out tonight. Uh, just, just, just pull it out. Maybe if he gets sassy. Maybe he'll, just, <laughs> maybe he'll just turn around and give you a little, like, little muffin top, you know? Uh, and then, obviously, uh, you jumped on this tour with Frank yep. as well. And uh, Frank was saying that Emily Parker had never heard punk music before, really. Who had? Uh, Emily the first oh, really? And when she heard it, she was like, wow, these guys have oh, got a awesome. lot of energy. Oh, cool. I, didn't, I didn't know that. That's great. But, uh, uh, it's funny too because they're, they're so they're so good, and classically trained. Yeah, yeah. Amazing voices, amazing, you know, uh, just super great. And like they're so quiet and pretty, and they're playing. And then I'm like sitting there watching from the side of the stage. When the first show is boring. This whole thing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, how the fuck are people gonna react when we come on and just like, <laughs> you know, it's it's like the calm before the storm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, speaking of that, like, uh, I was wondering whether you'd sort of tailor, maybe tailor the set a little bit more to a Frank Turner audience than a usual against me audience. Or? Absolutely not. Um, okay. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, we only have 40 minutes, yeah. so, we, I mean, we, we've kind of been doing the same thing like, we've been doing for the past like, year, two years. We'll play, let's see, we, we can get through about 14 songs um, in, in 40 minutes, which is pretty good number. Yeah, yeah. We usually do like two or three from each record. So it's a it's good mix. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to say a greatest hits collection because <laughs> number one that sounds vain and it makes you sound old. You see? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been a pretty big year for I guess as a band. It's, it's been a, it's been the best and the worst. I'd, I'd say two years. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you sort of left Sire and sort of went, uh, mm -hmm. just started self distributing. I mean, what was the decision that sparked that? What sparked that? Well, the, the whole backstory with Warner Brothers and Sire is that um, a, lot of, a lot of factors, like White Cross has leaked 100 days, you know, yeah, over, over said, three yeah. months before, and they, they, like, they wouldn't release it sooner. You're like, it's fucking, it's gone. Yeah, it's people out, have it. You know? um, and that's not, that's just the way it is these days. And, 
know, you tell me someone you know who doesn't have a hard drive full of like illegal movies or music. Uh, well, maybe you don't, but pretty much everyone I know uh, does. And maybe including myself, but maybe not. Interpol, don't worry. Um, no, but uh, uh, basically everyone at Warner got either fired or quit. So they had this new regime come in, and we met with them, and it was a. Uh, it just didn't click. No offense to them, no offense to us. Uh, it just didn't work, and they, it basically was an amicable split, and they gave us white crosses back. And so we had other offers from labels and stuff like that, but it just made more sense to go with X from Start our own. Are you went with Extra Mile? What's that? You went with Extra Mile of the UK. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Just extra Mile seems to be uh, taking on in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Now, like recently, uh, as a band, you've had like a bit of backlash from some of people who claim to be your older fans. You know, oh, you've, you've sold out, you've sold out, yeah. joined into a major label, but now you haven't. Has that kind of been? Oh, oh. Is it kind of like? Man, people, I'm sure there's somebody who's. Will you forgive and forget? <laughs> never. Never forgive, never forget. Just I never don't that. fucking care. Uh, it, yeah. It's like, it's to that. This band has been criticized for everything, and you, you can't ever let that. You have to. What is it? I think it's from a Forgetting Sarah Marshall or something like that. Yeah. Where Russell Brand, uh, Jonah Hill's giving him a seat. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, what does he say? Have you listened to this? Yeah, I was going to, but then I just got on with my life. Yeah, I've been busy living my life. I mean, that's a little harsh. I'm not saying yeah. that. I'm not saying, band, don't give me a demo. I'm saying that. It just, uh, it, you can't let that stuff get to you because everyone's yeah. a critic. And it's always great because normally the critics are usually people who don't do anything creative or productive. So, fuck it. It's the bottom line. Right? So, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. I do yeah. creative stuff. Yeah. But, but then again, everyone's completely entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I've, I mean, I've talked my fair amount of shit about bands. So, you know, it's, it's a way of life in the music scene. You talk shit. Yeah. Shit gets talked. Um, you said that um, Warner gave you White Cross back. Was it important for you to sort of re-release and put it back out there? And, uh, no, absolutely. On your own imprint? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, number one, we physically had to because it would not exist if we didn't. Like, they weren't going to keep pressing it. Yeah, it's yeah. done, so. And then doing, like, the, the Black Crosses thing as well. Like, doing, yeah. I mean, now it's, like, 10 pounds for a double CD, 32-page booklet, 28 songs. I mean, that sounds like a deal to me. Yeah. I don't know about I don't know about everybody else, but and it's not like we, we wanted to make it more exciting than just putting out white crosses again. So we gave all the bonus tracks from the whole Butch Big session and all that. And then Black Crosses is like Warren's playing drums on some songs that we were recorded before he was out and George came in. You know, it's but everything correlates. Like if you look at the track listing it's all like say um, suffocation on white crosses to this song um, what's it called it's called the western world i think called black crosses it's the same song but it's not yeah, I, mean, it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's an it's an interesting worthy release yeah. and you've done it with other, other records as well it's yeah. like total clarity oh yeah yeah i mean the whole thing with that is the original cow yeah all this music's there and a lot of times it's out there already that people have so why not give it a good mastering job and I've got a question for you now involving Tom. Yes. Do you think you should have him admitted to a mental hospital? Um, no. I've got a reason for this. This isn't just a okay, no, right? Bob Dylan sex dreams. Oh. He has sex dreams about him, and his wife, and Bob <laughs> Dylan in bed. Is that a sex dream? There's a line in it. It says Bob Dylan was open-minded, just like my wife. <laughs> what does that imply? Come on. I don't know. All I know is that that was literally a dream. <laughs> Jimmy like rolled out of bed. And, you know the story was he. That was the dream. He wrote it down. <laughs> of course, we're, we're, you know, we're that's pretty good. Though. We're only good. Yeah. I wish he was here. No, to I'm, not that. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Don't even be offended or be like, oh, what? he'd probably laugh. He'd laugh. Yeah, I, I'd hope so. I'd hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> it comes and, uh, yeah. We're talking about this, like obviously, like re-releasing stuff. Have you ever considered not so much re-releasing but re-recording the Visa V stuff? Because oh, I, I mean, there's some good songs on there, but like yeah, the production but value, could horrible be. recording. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know you've done it live a couple of times, haven't you? Yeah. Certain songs like Eden Quest and stuff. What super old songs? Yeah, uh, yeah, Visa V songs. Uh, well, wait, what's Impact song on there? Um, man, I no, I haven't. I've been in the band ten years. I've never heard those songs. No, it might have been. It might be. Rumors. Yeah. Rumors. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, to that, I I don't think so. I know there's there's always been some plans about trying to like get the tapes and remix it and remaster it and stuff like that, where it doesn't sound like a piece of paper is on the record <laughs> while it's spinning around. But uh, no, 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 like re-recording songs is. It's not taboo, it's just kind of weird. I remember when Avail, Avail, one of my favorite bands, yeah. did it. And it was cool, but I don't know, there's something just about the, the time and place of the original recording. Yeah, it's sick of all of them as well recently. Yeah. 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 And there's that Alkaline Trio Damnesia thing and yeah. all. They, they, That's they kind of different. Yeah, yeah. But to we'll, put it, we'll put it this way, because I know a lot of those bands, I'm not, this isn't talking shit. I don't know if I'm fully on board for that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah, so no. Just being honest. Yeah. 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 Um, so, finally, we've been wrapping up. For, we've been doing this for like three years. Yeah. And every interview we've done, we've wrapped up with questions about Chuck Reagan. About Chuck Reagan? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, it's not a question Wait, about Chuck Reagan. Do you guys run like Chuck Reagan facts on Twitter or something like no, that? No, no, not we, did a, we did a, um, a video about start a Chuck Reagan fishing show. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Maybe so I'd watch the, it. Um, so the, the question this time around is, how many eight-year-olds do you think it would take to beat up Chuck Reagan? <laughs> Only one, because Chuck would never hit an eight-year-old. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That, and, the, and the whole time is, he'd be going, hey, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me. And that's exactly what we need. Yeah. Thank you very much. Chuck Thank doesn't you. fight eight-year-olds. No. <laughs>